In this one we're going to have a look at something called Postman which is a tool for making HTTP requests in much the same way as what we've been doing with the API platform uh, user interface that we've used here. So choose high definition for the best viewing experience and if you'd like to join a growing group of software developers and take your skills to a new level all you need to do is subscribe, click the little notification icon and welcome. I'll say from the outset that it's entirely optional um, if you want to use Postman or not. Uh, because you do have something here which is perfectly fine and works. One thing I find with the API platform uh, user interface here, which isn't a bad thing, but is that when you do make the request, there's quite a lot of information um, there on the screen, a lot of peripheral information in my case, which I'm probably not going to use. I'm only interested in the request body. And also, I just like using Postman. I like the way it works, and it's an industry standard tool, which uh, a lot of developers use for developing and testing um, API, so I think it'll just be nice to introduce into this crash course. Uh, you may use it already, or it might be something that you'd like to learn. We're not going to go into it in great depth, but I'm just going to show you how to, how to do the same things as what we've already been doing here, which is making requests and reading the responses. So the first thing you need to do if you don't already have Postman installed on your machine, and if you do want to follow along and use Postman uh, rather than the API platform interface, is come here to postman.com forward slash downloads, uh, download the version for your system, and then once you have that downloaded, just open it up, and you should be greeted with something like this. So we're starting with a blank page, a blank canvas, and all we need to do then is just start making requests the same way or adding our operations in order to make requests in the same way as what we've been doing up to now. And so what I'll do is I click on this little plus here and then it opens this and I'm going to send a get request to. If you go to the headers tab here, we're just going to add an accept header. And this will be application. And so if I click on application forward slash JSON, I'm just going to edit this and it will be LD plus JSON. Okay, and then I can send my request. And so as you can see there, it went off, uh, sent a request. And this is the body of the response that we get back. And just like with our uh, API platform uh, user interface, we're getting the exact same information back, obviously. And you'll see the key here, Hydra colon member, and then each of the items underneath that array, we refer to them as a JSON LD document. And these are basically our records, uh, which we have in our system. So uh, we have our Acme core record, and we also have the one with the empty uh, name, which we used in the validation lesson. Now there's a way in which we can easily group all our related endpoints. And so if we come and click this little save here, It'll ask you to give your endpoint a name. So I'm just going to change this to get and then forward slash manufacturers. And what I'll do, if you see down here, it says new collection. So we'll create a new collection called products API. And then all our endpoints for the products API will all be grouped under the one collection. So products API and then click create and then click save. And then if we come over here, you'll see this little uh, like a folder tab. And there we have our products API with one uh, endpoint in there. And so if I click on these three dots, I can duplicate that and start to create another one. So I'll click on this one and I'm actually going to change this to a post request. Again, it's going to the same endpoint. So this time we're not going to retrieve them from the database. We're going to create new ones. And so headers. Uh, same value there, application for slash LD plus JSON, except this time we need to actually create a body for our request. And so choose raw from this drop down menu here, and then we're actually going to choose JSON. And we'll just drop that in there as the body. And it's got this handy little button here, Beautify, which will actually just uh, format the JSON nicely for us. And so this time we can actually create a manufacturer so I'll say a and so I've just called it a new manufacturer giving it the same name for the description uh, because we're not really bothered about what data we're entering here I'm going to change this to post manufacturers I'll just remove the word copy and then if I save this 
As you can see now in our collection, we have a get endpoint to manufacturers and we have a post endpoint to manufacturers. Let's actually give this a try. So we'll send that. I'm just going to close this. And so we have a 201 status. And as you can see, it's created us a new record with an ID of four. Uh, name, new manufacturer, description, new manufacturer, and country code is FR. To finish off, let's create a post route to our product. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this again. So the quickest way to get up and running with a new endpoint is to duplicate an existing one and just edit it uh, to how you want it. And so this time, we're going to say post to products. So the endpoint will be uh, localhost forward slash API products. Uh, headers will be the same. The body this time will be different. And so the body should look like this. Uh, MPN, let's actually just make up some random uh, letters here and so a few numbers. Name. And so all the usual stuff there, just uh, make up some details. What we'll do is actually go and get the uh, ID, so the IRI that we got back when we just created that new manufacturer. And so we'll create a product for that manufacturer this time. Okay, so this looks good. Let's send this request. And we get a 201 back, so that's looking good. And we have an ID of 2, so that tells me or I can assume that a record has been created in the database because I knew I, I only had one in there and that too will only get generated if a record does get created. So I'm pretty confident that this has worked and it's all looking good. So if you've managed to follow along, well done. You now have a uh, industry standard uh, API development and testing tool installed and you know how to use it and how to um, go and hit endpoints in the same way as what we've been doing with the API platform user interface. Let's move on and we'll use this in some of the future videos from here. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon. Each week I release a number of new recordings. If you'd like to be informed about my upcoming videos as well as receive exclusive content, discounts and early access to my new videos, you can join my mailing list by following the link underneath this video.